Hello guys, it's Chris from DAXTrader.co.uk and we're going to take a look at the DAX technical analysis for the 13th of July and take a quick replay for yesterday the 12th. Alright then, so got a chart open in front of me but I'm going to come back to that one. I'm actually going to go and take a look at the replay first of all. Okay. So in front of me, what I've actually got is my RSI version 4. Uh, it's the new upgraded version of the DAX Trader system that's been out for uh, since I think it was May, version 3. So I've got an upgrade ready for that, coming out fairly soon. So this is going to be road testing that. Settings that I'm going to be using, I've got a, a bullish template, which is a 90 and 40 RSI with 8 periods. I'm using a trend filter of 500. Um, so it's only going to buy if it's above, it's only going to sell if it's below. Um, I'm using a new filter which I've got built in, which is part of version 4. And this is to do with choppiness, to find out if a market is consolidating or if it's moving sideways. It doesn't trade in those conditions. I'm only trading between 6 and 6. And um, what am I doing? I'm trading at around about a pound a point. 13k lots. What else? Uh, closing all trades at half past eight. And uh, what else have we got here? I'm making sure that the trades open immediately when a signal comes rather than opening up a pending order, which is a really useful feature in version four. So you can have a pending order or a limit order uh, that will go, you know, open up on a retracement, for example, or pullback. Really cool feature, but I'm not using that. I'm just going to open the trade immediately. Um, I'm using an ATR profit target of 17 and an ATR stop loss of 3. Okay, I'm trading on a 5 minute chart. So that's a new feature as well. There's quite a lot of new features in version 4. Um, trailing stop loss, 30 points, and with a trading step of 15 points. So there we go, there are the settings that I'm using. Okay, in the background, I'm um, listening to Lydian Collective. Somebody asked me that the other day. All right, okay, so what have we got? Um, if we start the, the replay off, we have slow down just a little bit. I mean, the, the day started pretty pretty bullish from a previous, uh, from previous close from last night, and we were actually in, I'll just pause this up, we were actually in a bit of a bullish trend channel anyway, and I was thinking to myself, which way are we likely to, to, to continue today? Are we going to break lower or are we just going to continue to head higher? I was thinking that if we did break the channel, we had to also break a horizontal low, which would have been about there. Um, so it could have been an opportunity to just go long with a stop loss underneath that horizontal support. Um, and because we were still in the bullish template, I was going to hope that when the market opened, let's just get it back to the beginning here. It was going to do exactly that. So let's just make this little filter a little bit smaller in the window. Here we go. Okay, so this is where we take the price action up from. So RSI actually closed above the overbought, oversold level, should I say, pretty much after the first candle, which triggered our, our trade. And the trade just flew away. It just off, off it went. And I've got a trailing stop loss that's trailed this a few times already. So it got off to a really quick aggressive bullish start this morning which was great had a little turnaround here bit of a retracement and a pullback oh god got extremely close to the trailing stop but it just continued to go ahead and actually it hit the profit target so it's quite a nice trade um, don't know how many points that is off the top of my head I'm sure we can find out so 98.07 and came out at 159, so uh, 99.53. So it was just under 150 points, 146, something like that. Really, really nice trade. Off to a good start. From there, we pretty much got fairly cooked. We got to around about the 10,000 level, struggled to make any real significant progress beyond it. Um, had a couple of attempts at it, rejected here, 
kind of rejected there but had a little uh, little go to the upside there and for the rest of the day pretty much traded sideways There were a number of different signals that we had throughout the day with RSI. If I left my template on, this the actual indicator itself had a buy. Um, we were in pretty decent condition, so it bought. But I think this one may well have been stopped out. This one bought. And I think it's the same fate. We got stopped out. And then from after that, we were actually in this kind of choppy area. So this next one wasn't triggered. And um, the previous one is still open. Still continues to move sideways. Slightly bearish bias, if you like. Um, another option would have been to trade there. But uh, in actual fact, I think I might have only had this open to trade at one, one lot open at a maximum per... Uh, at, at a time, so because there was still a previous trade open, trade number three, I think uh, it, it wouldn't have opened any other trades. And this one may well have been triggered if it was just outside the inside this kind of uh, acceptable region. For the rest of the day, it didn't do anything. Uh, I closed it off at I think it was six o'clock, and already had this trade open still, so none of these were triggered. And so whilst the indicator was suggested to go long, um, I'd already had a trade open, and the conditions weren't right. Trade was closed out. Um, was the trade closed out? Let me just see. Yeah, trade was closed out at uh, a small loss, um, but overall, pretty decent day. So that was on the RSI 4. You'll hear more about that over the next sort of couple of weeks or so as I start to develop that and get it properly tested. Um, but what we're going to do now is take a look at the market for tomorrow and see if there's any, anything out there to uh, get us trading tomorrow. Signals were pretty light today. Whilst I don't uh, send signals out from this particular system, this is just a system that trades. Um, but uh, my signals themselves didn't really give me anything to really go on today. And then I switched it off in the afternoon. I'd missed the move in the morning. There wasn't really anything else going on. Some days you get... A lot of signals on the days you get nothing at all. Today was one of those days. Okay, so let's go have a look at the other system. Okay, so this is a five minute chart, and we're just going to pull up a couple of lines on here. It's a little bit messy with the different pivots, as you can see, all the historical pivot points. So we'll look at a few days worth of data on there. And it's a little bit laggy because this one's running on a remote server. So this was the channel roughly that we were working on from yesterday. So you might actually say that we've just broken that. Oh, it's really laggy. <laughs> really laggy. So you might actually say we've just broken that to downside if you look on the right hand side at the top um, here. So what would that have been? That would have been the daily R2 for yesterday, or for today. We're at 20 past 11 at the moment, so uh, for today. The R2, and we've just closed below that. And it looks like our daily pivot for tomorrow is going to be 99.16. But because we've broken outside of this channel, I'm starting to think to myself, now should I be looking to change my bias? And uh, give me just one second. Notice here that whilst we've kind of compressed up into this wedge here. And so there's a couple of different things that we can be looking at to trade here today. First of all, a breakthrough or significant breakdown below this little bottom line of this wedge 
could be pretty interesting, especially if we then go off and take the daily pivot out as well. A break to the upside will keep us within the channel and could be an opportunity to trade a little bit higher uh, towards the R1 or even the daily R2. Uh, this trade trend channel has been running for quite some time now, so I'm just kind of wondering how far it's got to go. But uh, the way I've been looking at it is the high Kanashi on the hourly chart has been giving me my basic indication. We're still green, so you've got to kind of think that it's still good to go higher here. Still quite a bit of momentum. Okay, so that's one thing I'm going to be looking out for. So, what can we say about the trend itself? I mean, if the trend breaks, how far down will we go? Uh, how far can we pull back in terms of a retracement? So, I guess a simple fib could probably help us out here to give us some targets. So, let's have a look at that. Again, we'll just wait for this to catch up. There we go. So, somewhere within this kind of range, you would have thought. to see that on 30 minute charts let's just go and zoom into that to maybe take a bit of pressure off of this chart it's already getting a little bit messy kind of range I would have thought somewhere between 95.70 96.60 uh, could be a good opportunity to pull back if you think you're going to dip by um, but at the moment we're still a little bit of room left to go we're still in that period of claiming back some of the losses post Brexit and um, you know there was a quite a big gap that was created from that that slump and you'd have thought that at least you can probably head up towards the 10.130 or 10.55 at least um, somewhere around this this kind of zone um, as a move to the upside. S and P is still making all time highs though, so I'm just wondering how far the DAX might be able to go to try to keep up with that. Um, but of course, all the while we're above this moving average, um, we've got a little bit more movement. I think where we can go uh, to follow this move. The daily 200 EMA is going to be a keen point for people and I think it's going to create a bit of a reaction. We've had a couple of opportunities or a couple of moments where we broke above it and were rejected fairly heavily so I wouldn't be surprised to see another one of that. And of course as long as we hold below this high here, um, ultimately you have to think that the longer term trend is still bearish. So they are the kind of levels that I'm going to be watching for tomorrow. Um, my overall bias is still bullish. Whilst I can appreciate we are still overcooked, um, it all depends on what the reaction is to this here. We've just broken out to the underside of that, so we're either going to be in a retracement phase where we can buy a dip, or it's just going to completely continue the, the trend that it has done over the last one, two, three days, where it just opens up and just flies off away. In the first half of the day, you pretty much get all of the move. So um, the first few uh well the first few candles first half an hour maybe hour will be quite important to watch the reaction for today i'd keep an eye on the pivot levels um i'd keep an eye on the reaction to the 10,000 retest um as an opportunity to make a double top to go lower maybe selling from the 10,000 level um and uh, I think anybody that's looking that isn't long already needs to definitely be careful of those overhead resistance levels have a good trading day and uh, I'll catch up with you later guys.